Good morning. As always, it's nice to have you here with us. Today we're celebrating the Feast of the Epiphany. Uh, as you may have noticed, things look a little bit different today. And the reason for that is that, oh, as I mentioned a few weeks ago, I was becoming the administrator of St. Bartholomew's Church in Sharpsville. And so today we thought it might be a, a nice touch to come over here to St. Bart's so that you can all see the place. Uh, it's a nice church. Actually, it's a beautiful church. It was erected, I believe, in the year uh, 1908. The parish itself dates back to, I think, 1874. So anyway, uh, it's wonderful to be here, and as always, wonderful to have you here with us. I hope your Christmas has been merry, and I well, hope the New Year celebration was good, too. So let's begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You raise the dead to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You give light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who on this day revealed your only begotten Son to the nations by the guidance of a star, grant in your mercy that we who know you already by faith may be brought to behold the beauty of your sublime glory through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Rise up in splendor, Jerusalem. Your light has come. The glory of the Lord shines upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick clouds cover the peoples. But upon you the Lord shines, and over you appears his glory. Nations shall walk by your light, and kings by your shining radiance. Raise your eyes and look about. They all gather and come to you. Your sons come from afar, and your daughters in the arms of their nurses. Then you shall be radiant at what you see. Your heart shall throb and overflow, for the riches of the sea shall be emptied out before you. The wealth of nations shall be brought to you. Caravans of camels shall fill you, dromedaries from Midian and Ephah, all from Sheba shall come, bearing gold and frankincense, and proclaiming the praises of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. Lord, Lord every, every nation, nation on, on earth, earth will, will adore, adore you. you. O God, with your judgment endow the king, and with your justice the king's son. He shall govern your people with justice 
and your afflicted ones with judgment. Lord, Lord every, every nation, nation on earth will, will adore, adore you. Justice shall flower in his days, and profound peace to the moon be no more. May he rule from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. Lord, Lord every, every nation, nation on earth will adore, adore you. you. The kings of Tarshish in the isles shall offer gifts. The kings of Arabia and Seba shall bring tribute. All kings shall pay him homage. All nations shall serve him. Lord, Lord every, every nation, nation on earth will adore you. you. For he shall rescue the poor when he cries out, and the afflicted when he has no one to help him. He shall have pity for the lowly and the poor. The lives of the poor he will save. Lord, Lord every, every nation, nation on earth will, will adore you. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for your benefit, namely, that the mystery was made known to me by revelation. It was not made known to people in other generations as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles are co-heirs, members of the same body, and co-partners in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. We saw his star at its rising and have come to do him homage. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of King Herod, behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is the newborn King of the Jews? We saw his star at its rising and have come to do him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was greatly troubled and all Jerusalem with him. Assembling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it has been written through the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, since from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and ascertained from them the time of the star's appearance. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the child. When you have found him, bring me word that I too may go and do him homage. After their audience with the king, they set out, and behold, the star that they had seen at its rising preceded them until it came and stopped over the place where the child was. They were overjoyed at seeing the star, and on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother. They prostrated themselves and did him homage. Then they opened their treasures and offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed for their country by another way. The Gospel of the Lord. 
praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. On this feast, uh, the Feast of the Epiphany, um, what we think about is the idea that, well, the word epiphany itself means manifestation. And so it's a feast that really celebrates the idea that God came to us. And not just that God came to us, but Matthew or St. Matthew writes the story in in such a way that we're supposed to be reminded of the Well, the star, the light. It was a sign that not just somebody important was being born, but that there was a light that was coming into the world. And that light, of course, is Jesus Christ, the Messiah, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And so what we need to make sure we understand is that we have a part to play in this story, just as those three wise men did. You see, If you think about the way the story is laid out by St. Matthew, there are three different responses to what is happening. There are those chief priests and the scribes. When Herod asks them, so where is the newborn king of the Jews to be born? Well, they said in Bethlehem of Judea, and then they disappear from the story. Apparently, they just went back to whatever they were doing. They didn't seem to care too much. Their response was really one of indifference. Herod's was much worse. He uh, responded with jealousy, with hatred. Uh, He was going to try to have the child killed. And then there were those three wise men. And when they understood that something momentous was going to be happening, they packed up their things and went on a journey. Not only did they do that, they obtained these treasures, gold, frankincense, and myrrh, and they came bearing gifts, and they searched high and low, and they sought out advice from people, and anyway, they came looking for the newborn king, and so they became part of the story, Uh, an important part of the story, because they showed that Jesus wasn't just going to be king of the Jews, but he was going to do something for all humanity. And the gifts they gave, gold and frankincense and myrrh, they showed that he was going to be a king, because that's what gold is, it's a gift fit for a king. They gave frankincense, which showed that he was going to be the priest, and they they gave myrrh, which is a gift that showed that One day he would die in some momentous way. But the question for us is, how do we respond? And I don't mean how do we respond to the coming of Jesus. I mean, how do we respond to life in general, to all the things that happen to us? You know, when I was assigned to the bishop to come here to St. Bartholomew's, uh, there were a couple of feelings that ran through my mind and my heart and my being. One uh, wasn't so admirable. It's, oh no, another job. But the other one was more admirable. And that was, well, there's a need. And so this is a good job. It'll be a good test. It's something I need to make sure I throw myself into. And um, hopefully I'm going to continue to do my best to listen to that second impulse because that's the way it needs to be. The people in this church lost their pastor and I'm to do my best to maybe not take his place, but to do my best to meet the needs of the people of the parish. And uh, the same thing is true, of course, at Notre Dame. Uh, They're going to see me less than they used to before. And so what do I need to do? Say, well, I have to do my best to bear that burden. I have to do my best to seize the opportunities. I have to do my best to be the good priest I'm called to be for the people at Notre Dame in the time I do have. And that's the way it needs to be. And it's not just me, of course. Uh, it's about all of us. You know, the people at St. Bart's can sit here and mope and say, oh, we lost our pastor. And there is a place for sadness, and there is a place for regret, and there is a place to, or for understanding that the situation is not perfectly optimal. But at the same time, they can also remind themselves, so, we have to try, we have to 
contribute. We have to do our best to participate. We have to do our best to keep this community of faith alive, and not just alive, but help it to be strong, help it to be vibrant, help it to be active. And that, of course, is the best response. And that's sort of the way it is, not just in the life of the church, but in life in general. We can go about our days looking at the world and see all sorts of ills, and we really have three ways we can respond. One, like those chief priests and the scribes. We could say, I really don't care too much. Or we can say, like King Herod, well, those people have problems, it's their own fault. We can, that it, we can um, respond with some sense of hostility. Or we can be like the three wise men, saying, well, here's some good that needs to be done. Here's an opportunity. Here's something that maybe I can help with. And... Who knows what good is going to be accomplished? But we need to make sure that we're people who respond well. Whatever the situation is, we are supposed to be people who respond in a, in a Christian fashion. And that isn't always easy. Uh, the world is a big place and there are all sorts of problems. But we can each and every one of us do our parts, both in our church, in our family, in our towns, uh, to make what difference we can. And ultimately, that is what God is counting on for us to try our best and to make our little corner of the world, and who knows, maybe even beyond that little corner, a better, happier, and more holy place. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now let us bring our prayers and petitions before God, our Almighty Father. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, that he'll be blessed with good health and be given the guidance of the Holy Spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our president and for all our political leaders, that they will govern us with wisdom and integrity, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for us, that we will help to be a light uh, to the nations, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all our friends and relatives who have died, that they may rest in the peace and joy of God's heavenly kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, as we celebrate this Feast of the Epiphany, we ask you to let your light shine in us and through us so that we may lead all those we meet back to you. We offer these and all our prayers through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, 
may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who has humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands that will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. <clears throat> Humble spirit and a heart. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be, ex may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look with favor, O Lord, we pray, on these gifts of your church, in which are offered now not gold or frankincense or myrrh, but he who by them is proclaimed, sacrificed and received, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For today you have revealed the mystery of our salvation in Christ as a light for the nations. And when he appeared in our mortal nature, you made us new by the glory of his immortal nature. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we offer the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Lawrence, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, 
with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. And now let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace with you. Peace with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for everlasting life. Now, since we cannot have communion together, let us say the prayer of spiritual communion together. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot receive you at this moment sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Go before us with heavenly light, O Lord, always and everywhere, that we may perceive with clear sight and revere with true affection the mystery in which you have willed us to participate through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Well, before I leave today, I would like to just express a few sentiments. Uh, I hope you did have a wonderful Christmas. I would like to thank you for all the, the cards and the gifts that you all sent. And um, as we enter 2022, make sure that you ask yourself, how can I be better this year? How can I be more Christian this year? How can I let the light of Christ shine through me more effectively this year? So like those three wise men, uh, we can help to magnify what the Lord has done. Uh, it has been nice having you here with us, and we'll see you again next week. Have a good week. <laughs>